just in case you ask. PZ stands for power zings and it's a measurement of awesomeness, okay? This is a relay. You've probably come across her in a device like this. And this particular device has two of them. Now this one is flushed and has four of them and we keep on adding them, are we? But this device, it's totally different. And why do I like it? Hmm, I'll tell you in a second. Hey guys, you've probably guessed that this is a connected relay and it comes with awesome features. Netio, it's not the first time I've actually got their products on my hands. I've talked in one of my previous videos about power cables and I've shown you how to build a really nice dashboard, in this case using a PC cable or cable with a kettle cord or ICE cord, whatever you want to call it, and I've connected it to my computer to draw a power measurements and create that dashboard, which now occasionally I use to mine Bitcoin. Okay, I'm guilty. But today we're going to talk about the power DIN for PZ. And as you probably guessed it from the name, uh, it's a DIN rail compatible, just like some of uh, 4CH series. So this makes it perfect for industrial application. Not so long ago, I had a pleasant video chat with Jan Rehak, which is a, a CEO of Netio, and we talked about uh, products in particular and the challenges uh, that products are facing in regards to industrial application. The label itself reveals a lot of details, so let's take a closer look. First, you probably notice RJ45. This is a 100 megabits connection, plenty enough to send the data in and out. But if that fails, there is also Wi-Fi, which you can switch automatically to in case there is a data loss, which is nice, and this is 2.4 gigahertz. Now, looking at the label, we will also notice that uh, this device is split into inputs and outputs because both are present on the device, which is exciting. Now relays are split into two categories. The power is driven through the Netio device and supplies up to 8 amps per channel for a total of 16 amps. Now these relays are metered, which means you will get individual measurements about current, load, power, voltage, etc. per channel. This is very exciting. Now another two relays, those are decoupled or dry contacts and you can use them in normally open or normally closed configuration. Because these are zero current switching, they are ideal for inductive loads, but they are only rated at 2 amps. This is to come forward with certification in Europe and like I said, it's extra safety for inductive loads. And lastly, there are two digital inputs with 10 volts across and you can receive the information about how many times they've been switched thanks to S0 timer, which is present in a, uh, each channel. Uh, this timer is also used to estimate the power use in like industrial applications for much greater uh, current draw. So you can read about it and get a little bit more details how it works as well. Now that you know what's outside, you probably want to take a tour the inside. Inside there is a ESP32. Big surprise actually because it's not a chipset that is really often present in uh, devices that are basically aiming at industrial application. Don't worry, you don't actually have to flush it to make it yours because of one single and very amazing reasons. The connectivity protocols which are plenty. Now a Bear with me because I'm gonna cheat and look at my cheat sheet in here to actually read them all to you because the list is long and impressive. So we have a REST API available in XML JSON as a URL. There is a Telnet, it's Modbus, TCP, MQTT with uh, Flex uh, flavor. There's also SNMP version one and with each net your products, there is a three year cloud plan if you want to use that. As you can see, that's quite impressive and nowhere near to what Tasmota has on offer. And it's available on each Netio device because they've pushed the same updates to power cables and devices like this to enable uh, that connectivity on every hardware, which is nice. Previously, power cables were limited to a single protocol. On top of that, you have a very nicely designed user interface that uh, introduces even more features. There are really great looking timers that you can use to control your device and individual channels or ports. And there is a interface that allows you to add users with different permissions and plenty of more configurations that you can play with. 
There is also a Netio mobile app, which you can use to connect to the device. But frankly speaking, the application is slightly underdeveloped and it doesn't offer much features, unlike the web interface. I hope that Netio will gonna put some work towards making it as usable as the interface itself. Now I've mentioned I'm going to talk about NFC. While the radio is present and you can kind of communicate with it, it doesn't really supply any information at the present. I hope that's going to be addressed in the features as I pitched a couple of ideas uh, to Netio CEO how, how the NFC could be utilized. This is predominantly feature for Netio cables and you can use that NFC on Netio cables to actually set them up. But as it stands right now, it's not supported on this device itself, despite hardware being there. Now that you know everything there is about this device, so let's hook it up with NoDirt and I'll show you how to use MQTT Flex in particular to connect the device and draw all the statistics from it so you could use it for your purposes. MQTT Flex is special because it lets you define the data structure and how you're going to communicate with the device and only send the information you need, which is awesome. Plus configuring it is as easy as uh, basically pasting a JSON file with the config. That's all. That way you can configure multiple devices with a single config file and it takes only a second. I hope in the future that's going to actually be possible with NFC. I've mentioned that MQTT Flex is cool because all you have to do to configure all the devices is to define that JSON file and just copy and paste it and that's it. Configuration is done. So let's take a look at the file itself. The file is split into three parts. In the first part, you have information about your MQTT server. So just the usual login, passwords, etc. And then you have a list of topics that the Netio device is going to be subscribed. So this is one object, this is second, etc. And in here you have to supp uh, supply the topic. So the topic it's going to be listening to, the hardware information. So this is outputs one, so relay one, and it listens to action. And then and the action itself, it's going to be sent as a payload. So I replicated this because uh, for each um, output and that way my device listens to every single output uh, in here and so whenever I receive the command, it's going to switch them. Now, the last part is the publishing part and it contains of two parts. First, you have to define the topic, obviously, and what you're going to publish in here for use the in and out status, which means everything. And I'm going to publish this whenever something happens. So whenever the state of output one changes or output two changes or every 60 seconds. Obviously, you can configure that to your desire. To get more information about uh, MQTT Flex, just click on Flex Online Configurator and it'll take you to this page that uh, has everything explained in detail. So let's take a look at my dashboard, which is very simple. You can control all outputs in here and uh, all the information is going to be updated on, on the dashboard itself. So let's take a look how I did it. First, I've defined the MQTT um, topic that uh, basically intercepts all the information about my Netio. You can see that information in here. It has some total uh, values, so total uh, so voltage, total current load energy. Those are actually summed for you. It's a very nice, neat feature. And next you have information about individual channels. So you have channel one and two, which are metered and contain information about the power use. And then two and three, those are decoupled channels and you can just basically get a state out of it. Now also inputs, if you define any inputs, so for example, you can connect the switch and receive that information back to node Those are also just defined as a MQTT nodes in uh, to a input state uh, topics. So each time device reports, I'm going to intercept this and I can action it. To create a dashboard, I'm actually sending that information to my dashboard nodes and uh, I'm using the JSON structure to display that information on the dashboard. It's not really complicated, so it's quite easy to set up. Now, to control uh, Netio, all you have to do is just obviously send information to the topics that we specify in MQTT Flex and the information is a number. So you use the number as a payload and then zero to five. Zero is off, five is toggle. And for whether you're using metered or whether you're using decoupled uh, relays, the control scheme is exactly the same. Told you, it's gonna be super easy to control it. So yeah, now you know. Now if you want those files, uh, I'm gonna list uh, the download link in my article. So you just can jump into my article and download that uh, Node-RED flow and test it out.
You probably wonder how I am going to use it. And the answer is 3D printing. I already have three 3D printers. There are two Ender device with the Ender V2 uh, recently reviewed by me. You can uh, watch this review there. But I'm going to actually use it to connect two Ender printers, my Octopi, and possibly the third resin one that is still waiting for the review. Something that I'm going to do very, very soon. I'd like to thank Netio for sending me this so I could take a look and share my excitement about Netio products with you. So hopefully in the future you're going to come across the products you like and maybe they will spark your interest. You have to admit that this is pretty interesting device, even though it's not aimed at home automation enthusiasts. While it aims at uh, industrial applications, I would strongly recommend you to go to the link in the description of this video and have a browse because Netty offers uh, different products for different devices category and some of them are quite interesting. So if that sounds like something you'd like to follow, you better take advantage of the fact that I have all the social media listed for you and you can follow one of the preferred ones to get notifications whenever something new is out. That's for now guys. You don't have a posting schedule, you know how YouTube works, so all I have to say is thanks so much for watching and see you later. Bye.